I'm with uh, Bo Malstrom. Uh, we've been up in Muhlenberg College for the visiting day committee. Uh, Bo has been involved in enzyme research for many years and has been a professor at Gothenburg University, the University of Uppsala in Gothenburg, Sweden. For many years you were involved with the Nobel Prize Committee. What was your function with them? Well, first I was just a regular member, then covering biochemistry, so they want to have on the committee representatives of all fields of chemistry. But later I became chairman. I was chairman from 77 through 88. Uh, and then I had to coordinate, so to speak, the work and r write the report of the committee. As chairman, I, I put together our yearly report that went for the goes to the academy for final vote. It is really officially then the whole academy that makes the Academy of Science that makes the decision on the Nobel Prize. How many Nobel prizes, prizes would have been awarded under your committee? Uh, well, 18, yes. But sometimes there were more than one a year, weren't there? Sometimes yes, uh, so, so one it's one good. prize, but it, is, yeah. it can be shared with up to three people. Yes. Hmm. And you were telling me about the enzyme work that you're doing. I yes, partly it is related to the Nobel Prize work because one of the, um, the things that I'm at present working on re really was started by a man who got the Nobel Prize. But let me s start, start a little further back. In all we do get the energy that we use for moving around or for pumping our blood and so on. All the energy that the living organism gets, we get from burning food stuff with the oxygen that we breathe. And to start with, when one oxidizes the food, one extracts first hydrogen atoms. Uh, but then th th those go into a what is called a coenzyme and that has to be then um, that hydrogen has to be t extracted from that and form w water together with the oxygen and that is occurs in particles in our that we have in all our cells well all all animals and and plants have it um, in, in their cells there are particles called mitochondria and what we now know that they're actually were originally bacteria that formed a symbiotic relationship with our cells at an early time in evolution. And in uh, th these mitochondria, the elect a hydrogen atom consists of a, a proton and an electron. And the electrons are extracted and are passed down a chain of respiratory enzymes. The final one of them called cytochrome oxidase, which is the one that oxygen reacts with. And Somehow, when that electron uh, current, it is more or less like a current, go goes down the mitochondrial membrane, because it's a membrane structure, uh, protons, uh, uh, which are then the hydrogen nuclei, are pumped across the membrane. Um, so you form, uh, it it, somewhat like a battery, you form an what we call an electrochemical gradient. It's a different, well, um, laymen usually know about pH. You have acid in your stomach. It's the same t type of thing here that you have different pH on, on the two sides of the membrane. And that, so that the membrane is, so to speak, charged. Uh, so it is somewhat like a battery. Uh, and that then, the, the electrochemical gradient is used to drive the synthesis of a molecule which is called ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is the universal energy currency in all cells. Uh, how that is, um, and, and, and that much we know. We know that the electron current creates a proton gradient. We know that the proton gradient drives the synthesis of ATP, but we don't know the mechanism of either step. So it is. That, that is what I'm trying to understand. How can an electron current through these, the, the so-called respiratory chain, how can that uh, be coupled to the pumping of protons across a membrane? This is something that we don't understand, but that is what I'm trying to understand. And what are some of the applications that that would have? Well, at, at present it is 
pure research, but in a longer perspective, I think one could, on the whole, uh, a living organism is a much more refined machine than any man-made machine. So what I think one can do is, and what one is already doing in, in certain areas, is to do what one calls biomimetic, imitating the, the, the living system. So one could imagine getting a energy technology, for example, where you instead of uh, you instead do the reverse, you do what plants do, you, you will um, break down water and form hydrogen, and we use hydrogen as a um, fuel to drive our cars. I mean, that technology is already available. It is a, the question of producing hydrogen in an eco economic way that is not available. But that is what I think we can learn from understanding these processes. Possibly we can make a way of splitting water and make hydrogen. But I think it's probably time for me. Oh, uh, yes. Bo is catching a plane tonight and is leaving for dinner at Bois. Thank you.